What's up good people of the internet? Matt here from House of Barbecue Experts. Today, we're talking tips and tricks, charcoal style. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a charcoal kind of guy. So there's a lot to know about charcoal. First and foremost, what's charcoal? It's basically just burnt out woods. So there's multiple types of essence, multiple types of woods that can be burned. So we're talking about briquettes, we're talking about lump charcoal, we're talking about wood chunks, chips. So obviously as the main fuel, we're gonna be looking at briquettes and we're gonna be looking at lump charcoal. Personally, I pretty much always work with maple sugar. It's a very versatile type of charcoal. So it produces a decent smoke, so a mild profile of smoke, whereas some oak or maybe hickory will have a higher profile of smoke. That's something we're gonna be talking a little later on. But as far as I'm concerned, like I said, maple sugar is the way to go. Uh, also because of the output that it gives. So you won't need as much charcoal as you would need with some other essence because it burns brighter, hotter. Uh, it's a more dense wood also. So uh, you can last a lot longer with some sugar maple. So it is well documented that some wood essence is gonna give out some flavor profile. One thing I wanna bust out right now is your charcoal will honestly not really impact the flavor profile of your meat unless you use some additional wood chunks. So it really doesn't matter as far as flavor profile if your charcoal is made out of sugar maple or if it's oak or whatnot the wood essence in your charcoal will have a direct impact on the output of heat, not so much on your flavor. When it comes to flavor profile, I like to work with wood chunks. I'm sure you're well aware that you can also find these in chips. I find that the chips will most of the time choke out your fire and will produce a bad quality smoke, whereas the chunks will burn brighter, hotter, so the flavor profile is gonna be more intense and also is gonna go through the meat and not just stick on it as a surface smoke. Um, which is why I honestly always recommend chunks over chips. When it comes to flavor profile, the charcoal you're using will not produce that much smoke flavor. So I like to work with either pecan, sugar maple, cherry as well, but you gotta keep in mind that this all depends on what type of meat you're cooking. So if you're cooking red meat, you can go with a higher smoke profile, which is often associated with hickory, as just an example. But if you're using hickory on chicken, I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna taste the chicken at all. It's only gonna be tasting like camping. So really take notice of what wood essence you're working with. One of the reasons I like to cook with pecan or a milder profile of smoke is I'm a low and slow kind of guy. I'm uh, a pulled pork kind of guy. So milder flavor profile of meats goes with milder profile of smoke. If you like to cook fish, you'll be working with some fruity woods. So we're talking about maple, cherry, apple chunks. Those are very fitting. So there's a lot of charts on the internet you can find. Otherwise, we also have documentation on our blog for that. So it's really an interesting combo to start playing with. Now, how much do you need? Really simple. All it takes is one chunk, maybe two chunks if you're working with a full basket of charcoal. But you don't need that much because you, like I said earlier, you don't want the flavor profile to overtake the meat flavor. It just, you, you want the smoke to brighten up the flavor. So just go light and start building from that. Maybe your first cook, play with one. Second cook, if it wasn't smoky enough, add another one. But don't go all in on your first cook and start testing around with flavor profiles and intensity as well. There's a couple of ways for you to start your charcoal. So obviously, I'm sure you all know the good old chimney. So you can use the chimney, basically just dump in a bunch of charcoal in it. You can put some paper balled up underneath, light it up. You can also work with some cardboard and wax little squares. That's gonna help you, depending if it's a rough weather. Those are, those are gonna help. As far as I'm concerned, I like to light my fire a lot faster. How do I do that? With this bad boy the max lighter. So basically all you have to do is stick it right in the charcoal, press that button, and then 30 seconds in, you're, you'll be seeing sparks flying all over the place. So those are two options to light your charcoal. This one we're talking about five minutes to get it started. This one, 30 seconds to two minutes maybe. So those are two good options. It really depends on uh, what kind of fire you need also. 
The max slider will be more proficient if you're doing low and slow because you don't want all of your basket to be full with lighten up charcoal so you can just create some pockets whereas this one is a dump in kind of approach. Uh, this one will work a lot better also if you want to have a big surface uh, of charcoal being lightened up. So all of the options you need right now just depends on how you like to run your business. Spoiler alert, you should never cook with the full barbecue lighten up. So you want to have half of your barbecue with some light up charcoal and the other half leave it empty. Why is that? So you want to cook with direct heat to sear your meat and then cook it as a convention oven. So basically over indirect heat. So this will keep all of the moisture inside of your barbecue and all of your meat as well. You also can work with the top grid. So if you want to cook vegetable real fast as the heat is coming up, it's a lot hotter on the top of your barbecue. So do not use it to rest meat or bread or stuff like that. It's going to go dry. So work off real fast on the direct, move it to indirect, and then for your vegetable, just cook them real quick on the top grid. One of the big upsides to working with charcoal is that it's reusable, meaning that once you're done cooking your meal, just shut off all the vents, let it cool down, and you'll be able to reignite your charcoal on your next cookout. If you're doing low and slow, keep in mind that you'll have plenty of heat for a handful of hours. It might require you, however, to just move your meat add some additional charcoal and put it back on if you want to do low and slow for maybe 8, 10, 12 hours plus. But on a regular basis, you should be able to do at least two, maybe three, maybe up to four cookout with a single load in your firebox. As always, make sure to subscribe on our Facebook and Instagram page. If you have any questions, reach out. We'll share our passion and make sure to answer all of your questions. And until then, enjoy your next cookout.